What is up guys and girls and welcome to the first episode of Kylex on the Couch where I plan to let you know what is being released on the top three streaming sites. That's Amazon Prime, Disney Plus and Netflix. Basically just to keep you in the loop and so you know when your favourite shows are coming out, when new shows are coming out and it is something we uh, want to carry on doing as well. Although it probably will be monthly rather than weekly. Um, this pilot episode we're just going to do it weekly to see what people like see if people like it so if you, if you prefer a weekly version please put it in the comments if you prefer a monthly version please put that in the comments as well so if you do enjoy it please hit that like button hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads obviously if you're new around here subscribe that goes without saying and um you know that way you don't miss any future uploads from me so with that being said let's crack on roll the intro Let's look at what Netflix is offering first, shall we? First up, we have Prank Encounter Season 2, which Netflix calls the most elaborate prank show on TV. Netflix have brought back Dustin from Stranger Things, um, a.k.a. Gaten Matarazzo, to host this horror-themed hidden camera-style prank show. Um, two complete strangers are introduced to each other under the guise of a trial for a job. And this is available to watch on the 1st of April. Let's take a look at the trailer. My boss, he hasn't been feeling well. I got a bite? Last night, I just didn't feel myself. The next 15 minutes are extremely critical for his health. Oh my God. Mr. Tim? Oh my God, oh my God. What's going on? I have no clue. You're on my show, Prank Encounters. <laughs> These two unsuspecting targets have never met, and they have no idea everyone they're about to meet are all actors, and everything they do will be caught on hidden cameras. You'll dig here and just, you know, go methodically. There's no rush. Yeah. I wonder what it's going to find. We made a big mistake. We can't let that mist touch us. <sighs> oh, my God. So scary. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's petrified. Rob, I'm gonna need your help over. Oh, All right, guys, I'm going in. Find your head. Everybody, just calm down. Wait a second. <gasps> Are you serious? I'm kind of serious. <laughs> well, shut. <laughs> Did you know anything about this? No, oh, I didn't know anything. That. I've never been so relieved to see you in my life. <laughs> okay, things are about to get nuts. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was awesome. Next up is something for history buffs like me. If that's you, you'll probably be familiar with the name Dan Snow from numerous other uh, history documentaries. Um, this one is new to Netflix. It's not a new series, but it's new to Netflix and um, will be available from the 1st of April to watch. In this series, Dan takes us through a list of different castles in the UK. Um, obviously, some in England, some in Scotland, some in Wales, and some in Northern Ireland. He's just going to talk you through the construction of the castles, the um, the people who have lived there, you know, and just give us some of the uh, history of these uh, great British strongholds. Starting off the series with Dover Castle, he moves through um, a number of other castles, including the Tower of London, Carnarvon Castle in Wales, Carrick Fergus Castle. I guess it's trailer time. For me, a great British castle is a fortress, a palace, a home. And a symbol of power, majesty and fear. For nearly a thousand years, castles have shaped Britain's famous landscape. These magnificent buildings have been home to some of the greatest heroes and villains in our national history. And many of them still stand proudly today, bursting with incredible stories of warfare, treachery, intrigue, and even murder. 
Join me, Dan Jones, as I uncover the stories behind six great British castles. I'm looking forward to that one so much. Um, I love my history and I love visiting castles. Some of them I've not even been to, so... On the 2nd of April, Netflix are releasing a movie starring one of my favourite actors, uh, Idris Elba. Um, it's based on a novel by G. Neri uh, called Ghetto Cowboy. Uh, Concrete Cowboy, also starring rapper Method Man, is about a troubled teen who is caught between a life of crime and his father's urban cowboy culture. Um, it's loosely based on the Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club in North Philadelphia. Um, roll the trailer. Yo. There's a horse in your house. Oh, this you right here. I ain't staying here. All right. So once you step out, that door stays locked till morning. All cowboys were black. Even the Lone Ranger was black. <laughs> Who's the Lone Ranger? Really? Harp, you teaching this boy anything? The history here is deep. You like the Wild West out here. I woke up to the morning sky first. Baby blue, just like we were. I know you. You Harp's boy. When I get up off this ground, I should be Your daddy got rules that you're not abiding by. Yo, what are you doing? You want to ride the street life? You can't be in my house. You want to wise up? You welcome back. Welcome back to what? I ain't got no home here. That's your choice. Then the rock I'll be shaded by. You be alone out here, man. I'm going to get my money, and I'm going to get up out of here. You with me or not, bro? But them streets have made you a man overnight. I'm your father, man. You ain't my father! I mean, you a father to everyone else out here. Oh, you hate me, man. I was just like him now. I don't know who they expect us to go up and be if we watching over our shoulder all our lives. I have something for you. Oh, look. Like real cowboy. <laughs> Please believe the breaking a horse meant crushing the will of the animal. <laughs> Only way you can realize its true spirit is through love. <laughs> you don't have to get out to grow up. <laughs> The city decide they don't need horses no more. Y'all trying to tell us right now? Come on, man. How you gonna do that to us? This is where we live. My sisters and my brothers. They can't take who we are as a people. So what we gonna do then? We gonna do what we always do. We gonna rock. Woo, tell me that didn't look good. Um, okay, so... On the 4th of April, we have a feature film coming to Netflix uh, from 2020 called What Lies Below. This is a horror sci-fi movie about a 16-year-old socially awkward girl called Liberty who returns home from camp after, I think it's two months, uh, to find that her mother's got engaged uh, to this charming, intelligent um, man. Um, he just seems to be too good to be true. Um, it promises to be a good one. Go. Well, how was camp? Any good digs? Yeah, some. We're here! Hey! This is my boyfriend, John. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. I hope you don't mind that I'm here. I know it's your lake house and I'm not trying to take away time with your mom. It's important to me that you're okay with this. I'm happy for you guys. How did you guys meet? I've been at the lake all year, studying a few species here. You're kind of a, a weird dude. I guess I am. But I mean, weird is cool, right? Do you always 
lock the doors when you sleepwalk? I saw you walk into the lake towards his light. I'm pretty dry. I love him so, so much. So, so. He's not normal. So, so, so. If we're gonna be a family, we have to learn how to forgive and forget. Right, Libs? Get off of him! Last up, we have a Netflix documentary which is going to be released on the 7th of April. Uh, this one tells the story of a robbery um, in 1990 of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. Um, 13 pieces of artwork were stolen, valued at half a billion dollars uh, by the FBI, which is absolutely mental. It's the biggest art heist ever um, in the world. So... To date, no arrests have been made. Um, no, art, none of the artworks have been found. So watch this as a robbery. The world's biggest art heist on the seventh. Maybe you can crack the case and collect the ten million reward leading to recovery of the masterpieces. I can't wait for this one. I don't know about you. Have you seen these paintings? They're worth half a billion dollars, and they disappeared thirty years ago. Whoever finds them will receive. A $10 million reward. But let's go back to the beginning. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum was a at least delight. Millions of dollars worth of artwork. Rembrandt, Degas, Vermeer. St. Patty's Day, 1990. Two men dressed as police officers show up at the door. And they say very dramatically, gentlemen, this is a robbery. There's no shortage of possible suspects. Boston was so wild west. The two front brothers, well, the Italian mob, well, the Irish mob. Hey, how you doing? The mafia knew that having a stolen masterpiece is a get out of jail free card. The feds will deal with you. They'll let you out of jail. An easy, easy score, as they say on the street. There were 13 works taken. Most important is Storm on the Sea of Galilee. It's the only Rembrandt seascape in existence. This was huge, not just locally, but internationally. In Dublin, Solon art was used by the IRA as an international currency. In Boston, Whitey Bulger provided the IRA with weapons. The painting could be in the Middle East. Japan. South America. What? It's mind-blowing. I've spent 25 years on this case. There's got to be a way to figure out where these paintings went. You could potentially get immunity. You could get $10 million. And that's why this case is so confounding. There's a lot of deaths. Everybody who apparently did the robbery is whacked. Works of art connect to the community. Standing in front of that painting would be an unbelievable experience. When I see those frames, I feel that they are waiting for the work to come back. They're out there. Somebody stashed them. Sometimes it's the next generation. Grandpa's dead. Look what we got. <laughs> so these are shows coming up on Netflix that stand out to me and that I want to recommend and that I'm going to be watching. Um, there is also loads more which you can check out here. I'll leave this picture up uh, for a few seconds. And you can just pause the video to check out if there's anything that floats your boat coming up on Netflix in the first week of April. Okay, next up we have Amazon Prime releases, and in no particular order, we have two classics and a solid film to kick us off. The first one, Sharon Stone, stars in this erotic thriller, which all boys coming of age around that time, the release in 1992, wore out the videotapes at that moment. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Constant pausing and rewinding uh, a certain scene in this film. That's right, we're talking about basic instinct. Sharon Stone plays a mysterious writer who becomes the main suspect in the brutal murder of a rock star. Also, it stars Michael Douglas, uh, who plays the investigating cop, who becomes entangled in an intense love affair with with uh, Sharon Stone. Basic instinct 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 uh gathered a lot of controversy with uh scenes and portrayals pushing the boundaries of hollywood's almost to breaking point um here's the trailer 
So we got 31 stab wounds. Or was it? Ice pick. I'd like to speak to a Miss Catherine Tremell, please. Is she a suspect? She's a writer. She published a novel. It's about a retired rock and roll star who gets murdered by his girlfriend. You know how she does the boyfriend? With an ice pick. She intended the book to be her alibi. You didn't feel anything for him. You just had sex with him for your book. In the beginning, he gave me a lot of pleasure. You like playing games? Games are fun. What's your new book about? A detective. He falls for the wrong woman. What happens? She kills him. How's it feel to kill someone? You tell me. You're in over your head. She seduces people. She manipulates people. She's evil! I have nothing too high. You playing a game here? <laughs> Games are over. So with the likes of Marvel and DC being so prominent at the moment, we're all aware of um, you know the likes of the superheroes behind me, Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, Batman, Superman, and even some of the lesser known ones like Guardians of the Galaxy, the Falcon, um, but does anyone remember the guy who dressed in a purple morph suit before they were even big in 2010? Um, you guessed it, I'm talking about the Phantom. Um, in 1996, Billy Zane, remember him, the guy from the Titanic who we all love to hate, um, donned a full body purple lycra get up to fight against the world's evils. Um, don't believe me? Let's check out the trailer for this classic coming out on Prime on the 1st of April. Just take a look around. Darkness rules the Earth. In a dangerous world. Governments crumble. Chaos reigns. In a treacherous time. There is opportunity in chaos. Evil is a fact. We shall succeed where they have failed. Drax is on a quest for a supernatural power. They know far too much. And courage. Stop them. You're the only one who can. Is a phantom. Who was that guy? Somebody I already killed. Some who say he is only a myth. Soon they will discover the Phantom is real. Stand Up Guys is the next movie released on the 1st of April and it stars Christopher Walken, Al Pacino and everyone's favourite shield maiden, Catherine Winnick, who played Lagfa in the Viking series. Um, this dark comedy from... 2012 uh, starts with Christopher Walken picking up his old gangster friend um, Al Pacino from prison and it will keep you guessing and laughing all the way through as they deal with old age, issue, old age issues and reminisce about the good old times. Um, this isn't their best work for either Walken or Pacino but it's it's a good watch. Um, so on the 2nd of April, you can watch The Missing Series 2. The ser first series uh, starred James Nesbitt, who played a frantic father looking for his son who went missing in France. This isn't a follow-on from Season 1, so you don't really have to watch Season 1 first. Um, it's more of an anthology. Um, it stars the same retired detective, Julian Baptiste. Uh, the second uh, series is based... On a British army garrison in Germany in 2014 when parents Captain Sam and Gemma are told by police that their daughter who went missing uh, back in 2003 has been found alive. Um, and it, it turns out she's been captive with another girl who went missing around the same time as well. Um, it's not a new series, it's been out... For a few years, it was shown originally on BBC One. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely worth a watch. How good are the Amazon Prime 
um, all or nothing documentaries though. Uh, I've I've loved the uh, the ones uh, from football, uh, the Bayern Munich ones, the uh, Tottenham Hotspurs, Man City, uh, through to the NFL, um, where we watched uh, Arizona Cardinals and the Dallas Cowboys, and and even rugby's uh, all Saint, uh, all Saints, all Blacks. Um, this time, though, they, they've decided they're going to take a look at uh, um, college-level football. And when I say football, I mean American football, not not actual football. Um, so we get to see behind the scenes at the Michigan Wolverines, uh, who are a coll- collegiate, is that, is that what they're called? Um, and it's not NFL, is it? But American football um, team. And I can't wait, personally, to see how it all works at that level. Um, so... I imagine it will be uh, a little bit more grassrootsy. It won't be so fancy. Um, and I think it will be quite interesting to see. So, shall we? The Michigan experience changes you. I said, Coach, what kind of team we're going to have this year? He said, Jimmy, when you guys come back 15, 20 years from now, and we know what kind of men you are. What kind of husbands you become? What kind of fathers you are? Then we'll know how good this football team is. Let's go work! Let's compete! I'm gonna bring this 2017 season to life. Be tougher. Be nasty. Be mean. It's a dark side. I get it. I see some of you looking at me like you got problems, man. <laughs> It's quite a circus in the Harbaugh house. Daddy, are you sure you're the boss of this place? No, I'm not sure about that. What do you want to do when you leave here? Play in the NFL. And I think that's awesome, but we all know that NFL stands for what? Not for long. Not for long. Let's go! Let's go, Woo! You play for the winniest oh. football program of all time! Damn it! From a parent's perspective, we worry all the time. I'm going to take care of your boy. You ever talk to your dad? Not at all. Does he ever call you? You got somebody who loves you with everything they have. Because I got your back. All we ask is everything you got. I want so much for you. Faith. Family. Football. Let's get this win! There you go. So, uh, once again, uh, along with these highlighted shows, there's also an abundance of movies coming to Amazon Prime um, this month. Um, around 80 movies uh, this week, actually, uh, to be rough, a rough, to give a rough estimate. Um, I'll show you most of the list here. And I'll leave it up just a moment. Um, again, pause it if you want to have a proper look um, to see what there is on there. Okay, so finally we're going to have a look at some of the Disney Plus content. Unlike Netflix and Amazon, Disney release um, all their content every Friday. So they release it weekly on a Friday. So the following is all going to be released on the 2nd of April. For the first two picks, we're going a long way back. We've got two Disney classics becoming available. In 1959, Disney released the family adventure film Third Man on the Mountain about a young Swiss man who wants to quonker. Conquer the mountain that killed his father. Um, it's based on a 1955 novel uh, called Banner in the Sky by James Ullman. Uh, fun fact, this it, this um, movie inspired the Matterhorn bobsleds attraction at Disneyland. Starring Michael Rennie, James MacArthur and Jenny Monroe. Um, and set in the golden age of alpinism. Um, why not give this classic a watch and let me know in the comments what you think. Let's watch the trailer. Tonight on Walt Disney Presents, you shared in a perilous assignment which Walt undertook in order to produce his newest motion picture, Third Man on the Mountain. Look at it! Now, Third Man on the Mountain is ready for release to motion picture theaters where your family can share the high adventure of Walt Disney's most breathtaking motion picture. Don't miss Michael Rennie, James MacArthur, and Janet Monroe in Third Man on the Mountain when it plays in a theater near you. 
Okay, The Island at the Top of the World is another Disney classic, this time from 1974. It's a live-action fantasy adventure film directed by Robert Stevenson of Mary Poppins and Herbie fame. Uh, set in 1907, a British millionaire arranges an expedition to the Arctic. After getting lost, he stumbles upon an uncharted island called Astrogard, which is occupied by a lost civilization of Norsemen. So that's where they went. I thought they just integrated into uh, other countries. You don't never see Norsemen anymore. So they just turned up in Astrogard. Be sure to check that out and see how this one ends. Uh, let's check out the trailer here. last is the epic adventure that only Walt Disney Productions could bring to the screen. The island at the top of the world. We are losing height! Here is the powerful story of the man who at the turn of the century went out in search of his lost son and found his party carried to the top of the world to discover for the first time a fantastic lost civilization of Vikings. They can leave but one penalty for the invaders. Death. Now in the Walt Disney Jules Verne tradition. Adventure beyond the imagination. See Walt Disney Productions. The island at the top of the world. Oh, how far we have come <laughs> in movies. Um, okay, so uh, The Last Ice is a documentary um, by the National Geographic um, Channel, which was acquired by Disney back in 2017. Um, it tells the story of Inuit communities fighting to protect the rapidly disappearing Arctic that obviously they've lived in for centuries. Um, against all odds, global, with global warming um, and all the different things that impact the future of the polar ice caps, this should not only be a good watch but also quite um, quite informational and uh, Pretty much an eye opener, I think. Um, so here's the trailer. I don't have to wear a watch when I'm hunting. It's just me, my dogs. It's the life I want to live. Today, the ice is not forming anymore. We need to protect the environment from the outside world. With the sea ice diminishing, the whole food chain is affected. The old hunting grounds, they are just history now. Everything is changing. I don't think we can underestimate how profound an impact past policies have been on the Arctic people. A quarter of all of the unexploited oil and gas reserves in the world are located in the Arctic. We're going to lose some species, there's no question about it. Without animals, we cannot survive. There certainly has been a breakdown of our way of life. Our language and our culture is so connected to our land, our water, and our ice. The stakes are so high for us. We're not going anywhere. Made in a Day is another documentary from the guys at Nat Geo. This time they're looking at the um, revolution of manufacturing, um, meaning the products we love are being made on a massive, massive scale uh, at a massive, massive speed and pace. Um, this documentary is looking at uh, some of the big brands um, from the likes of Tabasco Sauce all the way through to uh, space rockets and Tesla and and whatnot. If you're into this kind of thing, it should be uh, a good watch 
Um, so let's take a look at the trailer. Day in, day out. Our favourite products are manufactured on an unthinkable scale. And for these global brands, the conveyor belt never stops. We pull apart each and every cog of these huge scale precision operations. We service the entire world. It gives me goosebumps. The brand new series of Made in a Day. Back in 1993, Emilio Estevez, uh, a self-centred lawyer, was caught drink driving and sentenced to community service to coach a... I don't know, not very good um, hockey uh, team, a youth hockey team, sorry, um, and inadvertently brought hockey to um, new minds in the UK, um, a whole generation of youngsters in the UK. Um, fast forward 18 years and he's back again with his team in a brand new series um, called The Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Um, I know the child in you right now is begging um, you to watch this. So without further ado, here's the trailer. I gotta cut you. If you can't be great at hockey, it's like, don't bother. I want you to think about all the other kids who've been told that they're too small or too slow. They just want to get out there and play. Let's start our own team. All we need is an ice rink. You lost? So if you're looking at red skates, that's up front. Tell me the underdogs are going to come through in the end. You got to make this happen for yourself. Why do you care so much? Because you care. So, are we all in agreement that looks pretty darn good? Um, bringing us right up to date, though, and the last recommendation from me in this episode of Kylex in the Couch, at least, uh, is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, a little, a little, uh, you know, justification. Um, both The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Game Changers have already had their first episode um, out already. So, this is talking about their second episode. Um, which will be coming out on the second. Um, but I was that excited I had to put them both in. Um, so, yeah, uh, The Falcon and Winter Soldier is the brand new uh, TV show um, miniseries thingy um, set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it shares continuity with the, with the Marvel Cinematic Movie uh, franchise, obviously. Um, I don't want to slip up and give any way, uh, any, uh, away any... <laughs> can't even talk. It's coming to the end. It's okay. Uh, I don't want to give up away any spoilers, so I'm just going to go ahead and chuck on the uh, trailer for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, who would like to start? Mr. Barnes... Why does Sam aggravate you? 15 seconds to drop! So what's our plan? Hey. Great. Superheroes cannot be allowed to exist. I have no intention to leave my work unfinished. upside down right now where do we start Buck, i have a plan oh yeah what is it is you ready here we go again huh we've been running hard on the job can't take that from us Kick your ass. I... Gotta get 
That wasn't so hard. Are you ready? Hey. Is you ready? ready? Okay. You say you ready. What are you doing? Squad ready. Ready. Are you having a staring contest? Are you ready? Ready. ready? Is you ready? Just blank, sweet Jesus. I mean, how old are you? Okay, so Marvel do it right, don't they? Uh, and that's it for this week's episode of Kylex on the Couch. Please, if you have enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Subscribe if you're new around here for more episodes. Um, and if you've watched any of my recommendations, please do comment in the, in the comments just to let me know what you thought, whether I was right or whether I was wrong, whether there's better things I should have recommended, and so on and so forth. So I know what, what you guys who are watching want. This is only a pilot episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out, guys. Kai 5.